going to be taking a look at another tool, a security tool that's free. It's called Cane Enable. Just Google Cane Enable and you can download it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install it. See under underscore setup.exe. Now be aware that because there's some password, uh, <coughs> you know, cracking and, and tools and things in this. It's perfectly legal, by the way. It's you know a security tool. It's not a. I mean, it doesn't mean you couldn't do bad things with it. But you know, I mean, I could do bad things with a crowbar, but a crowbar is legal. Hey, um, you know, just ask Gordon Freeman in Half Life. Ha ha ha. No, but anyway. Um, so you'll want to install it. Now, just be aware that because of these tools, you may get a false positive on some of your antivirus software. It may tell you that it's a virus or something. It's not. Not a Trojan, not a virus. It's just that the algorithms and the things that are built into the package might get detected by your antivirus as a false positive. So I don't know what the latest, greatest version is by the time you watch this, but at this point it was 49440. So next, next, next. This is a great free tool. A lot of stuff built into it. Install the packet driver, yeah, one PCAP, yeah. Already installed it. But in your case, if this is your first installation, you would not have, so I'm gonna just do it again. So you can follow along with me if, if that's what you're doing or that's what you want to do. So I'd when PCAP is a dependency that equips it to work, you know, normally these tools utilize uh Linux and this equips it to work with the Windows TCP IP stack. Okay, and like you know, Winsock and things. Alright, so there's Kane Enable, there's the icon. And once I install it, um, you would probably want to disable your antivirus software and go into control panel and disable your firewall. So, you know, to get, you know, to have the most options available to you for scans and some of the tools and things. Because otherwise your firewall by default is going to block and your antivirus software is going to block a lot of the activities of Kane Enable. The shields are down, Captain. Remember, if you turn off your firewall and antivirus software for scanning and security testing, Make sure you remember to turn it back on when you are done. It would be good to connect to a network in a CHRU shell, sandbox, have your machine frozen with deep freeze, or do this in a VMware virtual machine where you have taken a snapshot. These measures can protect your computer while you lower your firewall and antivirus software for network scans. Next, select the network interface with which you wish to sniff packets. Your network card should be in promiscuous mode and if wireless, should be capable of receiving raw traffic. Operating your network interface in promiscuous mode means that it'll receive all the traffic on the network as opposed to traffic just destined for that particular CPU. Having a wireless card that can operate in raw mode means that you can receive and manipulate data before it's been pre-processed. So I'm going to open it. And inside Kane Enable, I want to first select an interface so notice I have a couple of virtual machines, VMware interfaces, but here's my actual physical interface, Broadcom. So I'm going to want to select that one. OK. That's the one I want to activate the sniffer. That's the one I want to it to operate on. All right. So I'm going to click this. And third, if necessary, open a command prompt with elevated administrator privileges, you know, by right clicking and selecting run as administrator and then type nutshow and IP set global task offload equals disable just like you see it here. If you haven't, um, you may also need to adjust some settings. If, if it warns you and tells you that um, you, know, you can't allow large packets because it is packet crafting software, just you know, follow the instructions, the given instructions, and you may have to open the command prompt and type a, a few things in. So once you do that, you can operate the sniffer, and you're good to go. So we're going to look at some of the bits and pieces and features here, and <coughs> these are just some of the you know net bias peer-to-peer -peer work groups on our network, and we could take a peek or peer into any of these. Um, in the basic work group, I'll you know we open up the generic one here. These are just some PCs placed on you know. Here's the computer I'm on, but you know, bla placed into generic work group there. <coughs> but let's go to the sniffer tab. This is more interesting. And the 
the first thing we'll do is, you know, because I had looked at that tool that's already there, but I'm, we'll start with a blank slate. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do a basic enumeration or ping sweep. So I'm going to scan MAC addresses. I don't want to do an entire network, but I'm going to do from subnet 48 to subnet 49, last valid IP, and we'll do all tests. And this can quickly build up a list of available IPs that will respond to ARP and ICMP traffic. Alright, so here are a list of available IPs. Now if I go down on subnet 48 and subnet 49, you can see the MAC address. You can also see the OUI fingerprint, the basic operating system. So if I ordered it by th this, you know, these are most likely printers. Um, you're looking at switches, routers, these are all IBM Corp. Those are most likely PCs, computers. It's just a network interface, sonic wall, there's a firewall. Um, you know, these are computers and things here, Dell, 3Com, those are switches. So you can tell, you know, by the OUI fingerprint there. Now let's uh, turn on the sniffer once again. And we're going to look at passwords. And we've already got a, a simple network management protocol. Uh, SNMP, some traffic going on there, but let's I'm just going to open a command prompt. I'm going to go to banana.com. I'll use Apple as a password. I don't know what a password is for that site, but notice that it captured it. It captured the traffic. So I logged in as anonymous and I tried the password Apple. So that's one feature there that's kind of useful. Now, let's implement APR or ARP cache poisoning on a subnet to impersonate gateways and DNS servers for a kind of man-in-the-middle attack. Note, please be cautious when implementing APR since, if it is not done carefully, you will trigger an alarm on IDS or intrusion detection systems and you could cripple the network you are testing. This is because doing this will generate a pattern or signature that would be recognized by the IDS. Using APR incorrectly or excessively can also bring an entire network down, which means it would be useless to you for sniffing for passwords or hacking and cracking to try to gather information in a penetration test. So we're going to turn on our sniffer, and this time we're going to use um, APR poisoning. And I'm going to go over here and click in this cell and add and you can add an IP if there were a particular address um, let me go back to sniffer here and depends on you know what you're looking for HTTP there's a lot of things you could choose there but basically you just want to right click on this top cell here and then add the most interesting ones to kind of do man in the middle or impersonate would be the gateway one and the DNS server five. So um, I'll choose this one and um, temporarily let's to get some interesting traffic here. Let's do everybody except for to kind of do like a little man in the middle here. So thinking they're consulting DNS, a lot of these guys will end up consulting me, 172.17.48.215. That'll start driving some traffic there. And these are people that would be doing queries and things. Let's do one more, and again, just click in the cell, and with the sniffer running, I'm going to activate APR, and let me add, this time, let's impersonate the gateway, and okay, 
Now pretty much anybody going onto the internet is going to go through the gateway, so this might generate for us some interesting traffic. Might actually start getting a few interesting things. We'll let this run for a while and then we'll come back to it and see what's going on. So yeah. And this is you know this is what's going on here. So basically we're crafting packets, we're kinda lying, we're telling people, hey, we're not 172.17.48.215, which is what we really are, but we're the gateway, 172.17.48.1. And that would enable us to eventually, over time, if we listened and ran this long enough, we'd be able to pick up things like FTP passwords, HTTP passwords, you know, just different things that, you know, we might find useful if we were attacking or if we were defending things that would help us harden our network and hopefully make it more secure. Fast forward. Just fast forwarded a little bit and just with some continued uh, poisoning, um, you know, just additional, we were able to capture some things. Certificates over SSL port 443, um, HTTP connections here, hop on over here to passwords, there's some HTTP sites and different websites people were going to and we could, you know, send these hash values to the cracker, but we'll save that for another Maybe another session there. Um, and again, FTP password. If somebody log in, in anonymous Apple. That was our FTP session that we chose to log in there. So, um, you know, just just being aware that um, you know th these are some of the you know basic built-in features in Can Enable. Note: I have only scratched the surface of the features and capabilities of this great free tool. So please pitch in with your own tips, comments, techniques, and suggestions so that we can build up a good public library of information available freely to the YouTube community.